How can we link a gun maker with medieval Cambridge commemoration? <laughs> well, just prove it, because you've got the window and king, so tell us, please, please, please come and tell us why we should be commemorating medieval Cambridge and what's all this that you've been up to. And, and thank you for coming all the way down from New York. <laughs> well, firstly, thank you very much for the award. And, um, it's always great to be back in Cambridge. I was here as a student, and um, it's lovely to be oh, back in Cambridge. Lots of places haven't changed, but that's the main thing, isn't it? Even if some of the buildings change. Um, so, what we mean by commemoration, which is the, the title of this book, is really a remembrance um, and the memory of people um, after their death. Um, today, that's usually quite a personal thing. We might choose how we commemorate someone through a funeral service or a memorial. Um, and, nas and collectively, um, perhaps the only time that we sort of think about commemorating a group of people is the um, uh, Remembrance um, Day and uh, commemoration. But for people in medieval uh, Cambridge, as in other towns, uh, commemoration was a very public thing and people made requests um, to be remembered um, after their deaths um, through a variety of means, uh, through elaborate funerals, through stained glass windows, through um, making uh, donations to churches, and also by founding and endowing uh, the academic colleges in Cambridge. Um, and our research came from a conference that we held in Trinity College back in 2013 uh, through the Monumental Brass Society. <coughs> And um, monumental brass is like this. Um, this is an example from uh, St. Bennett's Church of um, a uh, academic, um, Richard um, uh, Billingford, and a young uh, master of Corpus Christi College. Um, we looked at the different ways in which uh, people in medieval Cambridge uh, were commemorated. And we pulled some of the papers together from the conference, uh, plus commissioned some more. And with, with this book, we, we're looking in a variety of ways at how people were remembered. So we've got a chapter on the Cambridge uh, Franciscan Friars that Michael Robson has produced. Uh, and Franciscan Friars were a very important part of the medieval university. Uh, Richard Barber looks at the founding of Corpus Christi College uh, by two town guilds, um, but the role that London has played in that. We've got a chapter looking at Trinity Hall, the College of Trinity Hall, by Claire Daunton and Elizabeth <coughs> And a chapter looking at the um, academic dress, which is depicted on uh, monumental brasses, by John Baker. Um, we have Susan Powell looking at members of Lady Margaret Beaufort's household at Christ and St John's College. And Peter Jones looking at commemoration at King's College. And Christian Steer, who co-edited the book with me, has written an introduction. And um, last but not least, uh, Nicholas Rogers, who has come uh, with me um, today, has contributed a very interesting chapter on how much has um, been lost and what still survives, uh, particularly of the ceremonial uh, brasses and other funeral monuments. And I think there are about 41 uh, surviving uh, memorial grasses from medieval Cambridge, but we know there are more than 150 that have been um, lost. So that's um, really the, uh, the background to the book. And um, thank you very much. It uh, is a, it's <coughs> a very detailed old scholarly thing. I'm so personally very interested in the reference to grasses because the first thing I ever compiled while I was in the library was a guide to who's where in Cambridge monumental grasses. Don't think it's survived. I'm sure parents got <laughs> uh, And it's again based on a work that was done from the Cambridge Academic Conference. Yes. And the papers that have come yep. together and now been produced in a form that makes it so accessible to so many. And well done you and thank you for putting it together and we ask that you just accept these little tokens to say that we think you've done a bloody good job. <laughs> <laughs>